Let's focus, shall we? Oprah Winfrey is a media mogul, the goddess of prime time, producer, actress, public figure, winner of many awards, the richest African-American woman of the 20th century and the first female billionaire with dark skin. The magazines Forbes and Time have repeatedly named her the most influential celebrity. And the media was delighted with the mere rumors that she could run for the President of the United States, a mystery that has been unsolved for many years. How did an ordinary poor girl actually become a symbol of America? We've made a video about this great woman of our time to reveal all her secrets. Oprah Winfrey, how the queen of the media lives and what she spends her billions on. The future star was born on January 29, 1954, in the small American town of Kosciuszko, Mississippi. She was named after a biblical character and was officially registered as Orpa Gail Winfrey. Subsequently, the difficult to pronounce name Orpa was replaced by the softer Oprah. Her parents, Maid Vernita Lee and Minor Vernon Winfrey, who later had several jobs, were never married. The girl was born when her father was serving in the army and her mother didn't care much for the child because she was too young and soon left for the north of the USA to Milwaukee. Oprah was left in the rural wilderness in the care of her grandmother, Haiti May. From the age of two and a half, the capable girl learned to read and write. And at the age of three, she amazed neighbors with her speech skills. She read Bible chapters from memory so expressively that the members of the church called her our preacher. It was the rare case when a future career of a child is obvious with the unaided eye. Oprah interviewed garden crows and the doll that she made herself from corn cob. Surprisingly, despite her strict grandmother, the lack of clothes and toys, as well as the absence of parental love, Oprah remembers her childhood with tenderness. Her life turned into a living hell when her own mother came to take her six years later. The mother suddenly appeared and snatched Oprah from her familiar and in some way even cozy life to settle in the nightmarish ghetto of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the most drinking state in the USA. The girl had a half-sister and a brother who raped Oprah when she was nine years old. According to Winfrey, the 19-year-old scumbag bought her ice cream after the deed and simply asked her to be silent. The series of abuse continued. The social status of the family was so low that even the mother's friends and relatives didn't mind molesting the girl. The series of abuse and harassment seemed to have no end. But Oprah found the strength and returned to school at the age of 12. Fortunately, she grasped everything on the fly and had some previous knowledge base. She also began to participate in public speaking competitions. However, she didn't last long. Having suffered from unbearable conditions at home, she took money from her mother and ran away. For a whole year, the girl managed to hide until the stolen funds ran out and she returned to her family again. However, Vernita was furious and disowned her daughter. So at the age of 14, Oprah found herself, according to some sources, in a home for troubled teenagers, according to others, in juvenile detention. It got even worse due to an early pregnancy and the death of her child, after which Oprah never became a mother. Winfrey shared that books helped her survive at that time. She was empowered by the stories of strong women who made it through all life's challenges. Her role models were Helen Keller, who despite being completely deaf and blind, wrote more than a dozen outstanding books and Maya Angelou, a famous American poet who was also subjected to violence. At that difficult time, Oprah's father lent a helping hand, taking her from the orphanage and forcing her to study. Already at 16, she won the oratory contest. Thanks to this victory, the girl entered the University of Tennessee, where she studied communication. By the way, back in high school, Winfrey dated a peer, Anthony Odie. He still has the love notes they exchanged, but even then, the young man understood that Oprah was destined for a much better life than he could have provided. Their paths parted on Valentine's Day in their senior year. At the university, a few months after breaking up with Odie, Winfrey met William Taylor. Oprah held on tightly to this relationship, but she needed to build a career, and Taylor refused to follow his beloved all over the country. In 1971, Winfrey began working as an assistant commentator on CBS, but she couldn't hold this position for a long time because she kept starting to cry during the broadcast or speak in a broken voice due to excessive sensibility. But Oprah didn't give up and five years later she received the position of an announcer. 
and then co-host of the talk show, People Are Talking. This was Oprah's first real success because unexpectedly for everyone, the broadcast of this dark-skinned presenter caused a wave of sympathy from the public and the ratings of the program steadily went up. After that, the charming Winfrey was noticed on other channels of the country. The rapid growth of popularity, however, couldn't solve personal problems. After several short-lived affairs, Oprah began dating a married man who wasn't going to leave his wife. Winfrey later recalled that she was very dependent, literally begging on her knees to stay with her. However, the man rejected her, after which Oprah became depressed and wrote a suicide note on September 8, 1981, instructing her best friend Gail King to water her plants. Fortunately, she didn't commit suicide after all, but emotional problems led to weight problems. Winfrey later admitted that she started taking drugs with another man she had a relationship with. By the way, Oprah is so close to Gail King, the host of The Gail King Show, and the current editor of the magazine O, owned by Oprah, that the media came up with a story about a secret affair between them. However, friends only laugh at this, and Winfrey also bitterly notes that modern society, for some reason, doesn't accept a close spiritual connection between people without physical intimacy. In 1983, she accepted an offer from a Chicago television company and began hosting the AM Chicago News program. Her four-year contract involved a fee of $200,000 a year and a move to Chicago. In just a year, Oprah turned a boring, low-rated show into a blast with amazing ratings. During this time, she starred in Steven Spielberg's film, The Color Purple. Until you do right by me, everything you think about is gonna crumble. Don't do it, Miss Seal. Don't trade places with what I've been through. And this role was highly appreciated and got nominated for an Oscar and Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress. In the wake of Winfrey's cinematic success, several more films with their participation were released, including Native Son and the comedy Throw Mama from the Train. Ladies and gentlemen, the author of the best-selling novel. Author of the best-selling novel. Fire. Author of the best-selling novel. You must be very proud of it. Also, Oprah often voices the characters of full-length cartoons. She gave her voice to the characters of Disney's The Princess and the Frog, B-movie Honey Plot, and Charlotte's Web. At the same time, Happy Times finally came to Oprah's personal life. After relationships with film critic Roger Ebert, and director Reginald Chevalier, in 1986 she met Stedman Graham, a businessman and teacher, and they began a relationship. In September 1986, her main brainchild was born, The Oprah Winfrey Show, which secured her status of a media superstar and the main angel of America. She showed such patience and sincere interests that her guests, as if under hypnosis, revealed their innermost secrets, cried and laughed with Oprah. Moreover, this concerned both ordinary people and distinguished celebrities. One episode was especially memorable when Tom Cruise, in a fit of frankness, began to jump on the couch while talking about his happy relationship with his fiancée Katie Holmes. Over the years of the show's existence, Michael Jordan, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jim Carrey, Bill Gates, Al Pacino and many others have visited Winfrey. But the most popular episode was the one featuring Michael Jackson, in which he gave his first interview after 14 years of silence. I have to ask you this. So many mothers uh, in my audience have said to please ask you this question. Yeah. Why do you always grab your crotch? <laughs> it was watched by 37 million viewers around the world. For a quarter of a century, the show has been on the crest of popularity, providing Oprah with huge money and making her one of the most influential women in the United States. In one of the most successful seasons in the history of the program, from 1991 to 1992, the shows were watched daily by 13 million people. In total, 4,561 episodes of The Oprah Winfrey Show were filmed and shown, which allowed the show to enter the list of the 50 greatest TV programs in America. Only in the first two years, the producing TV company managed to earn $125 million. And with each subsequent year, the popularity and the amount of money earned only grew. 
In 1992, Oprah got engaged to her significant other, Stedman Graham, but the wedding never happened. Winfrey explains this by the fact that they both understood at a deep level that the formal conclusion of marriage doesn't strengthen the relationship in any way, and sometimes even spoils it. On the pages of her magazine, she stated that the main thing in the relationship for her is partnership and joint work on problems. No compromises, sacrifices, and commitments guarantee happiness. And it seems that this formula works perfectly, because Oprah and Stedman have been inseparable for 30 years. In 1997, Oprah organized the Charity Foundation, and she regularly donates a lot of money to it. She invested $400 million in educational projects alone, donated $10 million for the victims of Hurricane Katrina, and spent $12 million on the construction of a museum on African culture. Sometimes she has random bursts of charity, when she could easily give all the participants of her show a car worth about $30,000. At the beginning of the episode, 11 people took the stage and immediately received the keys to new cars. The rest of the audience, which is about 265 people, were given small boxes before the start, which they opened at Oprah's command. Each of them found car keys in their boxes. A fun fact is that all those invited to the show were not chosen randomly. They all complained to Winfrey that their vehicles were in a terrible state. Moreover, Oprah, who decided not to have her own children, after the tragic events of her youth, finances a boarding school for girls called the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy. She says that although she doesn't have a child of her own, she considers all the girls who study at this school to be her daughters. Also, Oprah says that she is glad that she doesn't have her own kids, because otherwise they would have been destined to become part of her image, and in the end, they would have had every chance to hate her for that. And she had seen too many people whose lives had been ruined by their parents. In January 2011, Oprah founded her own entertainment TV channel, OWN. And five months later, the last episode of her legendary show was released. Although she had been thinking about closing since 1997, each time she was persuaded to extend it for several more years. As a result, Oprah firmly decided that she would not host it for more than a half a century. The last show aired on May 25, 2011. It was preceded by a grand party in Chicago, attended by 13,000 people. Among the guests were Tom Cruise, Madonna, Will Smith, Stevie Wonder, Beyonce, and almost the entire Hollywood star crowd. Shortly after the show closed, Oprah was awarded the Jean Hersholt Award as part of the Oscar ceremony, which is occasionally awarded for outstanding contribution to the cause of humanism. In 2013, Winfrey was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by Barack Obama. Now we should remember that on the eve of the presidential election in 2009, a charming married couple, Barack and Michelle, appeared on the air at Oprah. Millions of housewives across America clung to the screens and eventually cast their vote for the candidate, whose family was supported by Oprah herself. Later, she publicly sympathized with presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. In early 2018, a rumor spread that Oprah Winfrey was going to run for president of the United States. However, she herself said that she knows well what she can and can't do, and assured the public that she doesn't have such plans. Oprah admitted that at that time she felt very strong support and had offers from very influential people to spend $1 billion on her election campaign. Speaking of billions, we must not forget that Oprah Winfrey herself is a real tycoon and one of the richest women on the planet. Her fortune is estimated at $3.5 billion, and her annual income is more than $315 million. Though it's not the huge fortune itself that is surprising, but the rate at which it grew. Oprah became a millionaire for the first time back in 1989 when she worked in Chicago. But the contract was drawn up in such a way that Oprah was not entitled to any bonuses for the fact that she actually revived the ratings of the show. Once her agent friend told her that this was slave labor, and he thought she should earn a million dollars a year and offer to go to the management of the channel immediately in order to change the terms of the contract. King World Management went numb from such impudence and showed Oprah the door. They were quite surprised when they learned that Miss Winfrey was going to organize her own production company, Harpo, but it was too late. Oprah officially became a billionaire in 2000, at the same time securing the title of the first African-American woman to have such a status in history. 
To date, Winfrey ranks fourth in the world ranking of the richest celebrities, second only to George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, and Kanye West. An impressive part of the assets is securities. For example, since 2015, she has been a shareholder, she owns 10% of the company, and a member of the board of Weight Watchers, which deals with the problem of obesity, offering services to maintain optimal weight, promote fitness and a healthy lifestyle. Starting with a share worth $43 million, she eventually turned it into $400 million. However, she had setbacks too. In 2019, Weight Watcher shares catastrophically collapsed in price by almost five times due to an unsuccessful advertising campaign, and since then there have been no more ups like 2015. Winfrey lost $117 million during this fall, but quickly got her bearings and made statements to the press that she would pay more attention to the company's affairs. As a result, the shares have grown somewhat on this news, and she returned some of the lost money. She also owns a quarter of all the shares of the OWN TV company, which are estimated at $75 million. According to Forbes, for 25 years of triumphant existence, the Oprah Winfrey Show brought its founder almost $2 billion. The compilers of the rating added to this amount the profit from the films in which she starred and which she produced. For example, the movie Selma, which brought almost $70 million at the global box office. The production company Harpo itself is estimated at $150 million. By the way, Winfrey didn't give up her acting career either, even if she does it rarely. In different years, she played in the mystical drama Beloved, Fantasy A Wrinkle in Time, and biographical dramas The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks and The Butler. The president was king. I'm really sorry about the president. I really am. But you and that White House can kiss my ass. I don't care what goes on in that house and she also appears on the screen as herself. In 2010, Oprah earned a good income from an advertising campaign to promote tourism to Australia, which cost the country's authorities $2.3 million. The TV host also advertised Jeep cars and encouraged people to come to Philadelphia. And in 2018, the business media spread the news that the media mogul had signed a contract with Apple Corporation, according to which a new show will appear in the streaming service and Winfrey will be the writer of it. The TV star and the Queen of American Hearts also lives like royalty. Miss Winfrey owns just under a thousand acres of property worth at least $200 million. The gem in this impressive list of housing can confidently be called the Promised Land Ranch in Montecito, California, which Oprah got in three purchases, totaling more than $85 million. Almost 21,500 square feet of quiet suburban luxury property in Santa Barbara County includes the main house in the colonial style built in 1919. Its uniqueness lies in the fact that the original details have been preserved since the date of its construction. Wooden beams, fireplaces, furniture, which gives the house a unique charm. The mansion has six bedrooms, 14 bathrooms, a luxurious kitchen and dining room, a study, a living room, a home theater, and all this is furnished with great love and taste. A special place in the house is occupied by Oprah's personal library. In addition to the cozy interior and rare books, it's decorated with valuable paintings and a large doll. There is also a beautiful garden and an oak grove on the territory. Hawaii holds a special place in Oprah's heart. Her personal real estate manager has been looking for the perfect secluded place to build a house for several years, Due to fears that the territories could later be bought out for the construction of other houses, the prudent Winfrey decided to take a whole 50 acres beach worth $8 million. The star spent another $15 million to buy almost 100 acres of the neighboring beach because this is a good investment in commercial construction. Judging by the purchases made in Hawaii, Oprah is simply in love with this piece of paradise. She purchased two houses in the village of Hula thereby expanding her land by another 18 acres. Winfrey's properties in this region are so vast that according to rumors, she goes around them on a rover and even built herself a secret road to move freely around the island. Winfrey also has a high-tech house in Colorado worth $14 million, the interiors of which are made using natural stone and wood. The mansion has five bedrooms, a gym, 
a billiard room, a jacuzzi with a stunning view, and for the convenience of the hostess, there is a private trail from the house to the ski track. Since the TV host has lived in Chicago for a long time, there are also city apartments on the list of her real estate. In the 90s, she immediately purchased four apartments on the 56th and 57th floors of a fashionable skyscraper and organized them into a single space, which in 2016 was sold for $4.6 million. Part of the real estate turned out to be owned by the TV host for investment purposes. So Oprah bought an estate on Orcas Island in Washington State for $8.27 million and sold it for $14 million. Another house in which the TV host has never lived is a cozy bright house in Elmwood, Illinois. However, she didn't earn a lot by it by her standards, a little more than $100,000. Thanks to her flair and luck, Oprah constantly makes real estate transactions, managing to make money on this as well. According to some reports, her relatives live in numerous houses and apartments registered to Winfrey. It is not specified which ones. The private jet Global Express XRS Jet, designed for 10 passengers, completes an impressive list of expensive purchases. The cost of a luxury aircraft is $42 million, and Oprah spends $1.5 million annually on its maintenance. This is not a show-off at all, but a trivial necessity. Winfrey can't use civil aviation aircraft because of her frenzied popularity. People just don't give way to her. By the way, in 2005, Oprah and her significant other got into a very unpleasant flight incident. A flock of birds crashed into her private jet piloted by Stedman. Fortunately, the pilot quickly got his bearings and requested an emergency landing in Santa Barbara. No one was injured as a result of the emergency landing. We can safely say that Oprah Winfrey's wealth almost doesn't bother anyone because it didn't fall on her overnight, but became a natural extension of her talent and fair compensation for her difficult childhood years. Americans adore her for her warmth, empathy, and desire to help everyone who came to her for help. You can't learn this in any prestigious college or buy it for money. The great Oprah Winfrey was born with this unique gift, which has already warmed millions of hearts around the world. The admiration and awe that ordinary people give her are more valuable than any jewelry. Do you think the world will be a better place if people like Oprah were elected as heads of state? And would she be a good president? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.